problem number 15 of section 1.2.1 is similar to problem number 11. In problem number 11, we were given a particle traveling along the x-axis. We were asked to find its instantaneous velocity. Now we're asked to look at that same particle and find its instantaneous acceleration. Well, instantaneous acceleration is just the instantaneous rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. So if you recall in section 11, or excuse me, problem number 11, we found that the function modeling velocity of the particle is given by minus 2 over t cubed feet per second. So now we're going to apply the same techniques that we did in problem 11 to find the instantaneous acceleration. So we start out by looking at the average rate of change over the interval t to t plus h. And next, we just plug in to the formula for velocity that we found in problem number 11. We get minus 2 over t plus h cubed. And we want minus, now we have minus 2 over t cubed all over h. Now we apply, again, a similar technique. We're going to find a common denominator and simplify the numerator here. And I'm just going to go ahead and take one step ahead and pull out the 1 over h, too. All right, so here we have minus 2t cubed. And we have minus minus, which is plus. So I'm going to be adding uh, plus 2 times t plus h quantity cubed. And this is going to be all over t cubed times t plus h cubed. And I already have that over h, so I have this right here. Now, the next step is to multiply this out. Now, multiply out a quadratic isn't too bad. However, multiply out uh, um, a uh, polynomial of degree 3 is a little bit more difficult. We can see that um, right here that the leading term is going to be 2t cubed. So let's start out there. Now we have this is going to be 1 over h times minus 2t cubed plus 2. Now, actually, in order to get the actual formula, we're going to have to actually just kind of bite the bullet here and multiply it out anyway. So this is going to be 2t plus h times t plus h squared all over t cubed times t plus h cubed. Now, so far I've just copied down the previous line. But the next step, now we need to multiply out t plus h squared, which is t squared plus 2th plus h squared over the same denominator. All right. Now this is going to be 1 over h. And close my parentheses in the last line. And we end up with minus 2t cubed plus, this is I'm going to be multiplying each term in the quadratic here by 2t and then multiplying it and then adding in the quadratic multi with each term multiplied by 2h. So we have minus 2t cubed plus 2t times t squared or t cubed. 
let's take 2t times 2th. So we have 4t squared h, and then plus 2th squared. Now we need to add, do the same thing, but multiply the, poly, or the quadratic by 2h. So now we have 2h times t squared plus uh, 2h times 2th. So 2h t or 2h squared t rather plus 2h cubed. And that is the numerator, and we're going to repeat the denominator again. Now, if this equation is starting to scare you a little bit, don't worry because it's going to simplify a lot here, especially when we plug in h equals 0. So, so first of all, just notice that we have, or should have, or yes, we do right here at the beginning, we have our leading coefficients canceling out. We have minus 2t cubed plus 2t cubed. So those cancel out. Now notice that every other term has an h in it. So let's just cancel out an h from every term. Cancel out the squared. There's an h there. Get rid of that. Make this a 2. And let's rewrite this. So now we're left with 4t squared plus 2th plus 2t squared plus 2t or 2ht plus 2h squared. all over by our by now very familiar, familiar denominator of t cubed times t plus h quantity cubed. Now, still a little messy, but once we substitute in h equals 0, we get a rather simple, simple result, which is 4t squared. This term is just going to go to 0, so next term is plus 2t squared. plus 2ht goes to 0 and 2h squared goes to 0. So that leaves us in the denominator with t cubed. You can see if you plug in 0 here, you just end up with another t cubed term. So all of this over t to the 6th. All right. So now simplify this out a little bit, and we end up with 4 over t to the fourth plus 2 over, actually, it's, it gets even better than this because we can just cancel out a t squared from each term, changing this exponent to a 4. And we have 4 plus 2, which is 6, over t to the fourth. Now remember that we're now computing the formula for the instantaneous acceleration, which is going to be measured in change in velocity, so meters per second per second, or meters per excuse me, feet per second squared. And this here is the formula for the instantaneous acceleration of our particle. And end of section.